The Algebra Project works, um, has worked successfully with kids who have similar challenges to kids that um, in Yuma County. Some kids from lower socioeconomic status, some kids who have not had a, a history of succeeding in school. And, and we believed, we, we immediately identified with that vision that the Algebra Project holds that, that middle school algebra is a gateway class and we have to make sure that all of our kids are ready. That, we, that it's a civil right, and what can we do to help them get there? I was concerned that our students were not getting the math they needed, especially during summer school, and I had heard that we were applying for a grant, and so I was on the committee to write the grant to bring the algebra project into Yuma so that our kids could get the additional help with the math they needed. Mathematics in the real world isn't just a pencil and paper acti activity with computation on it. We have to have a reason or a purpose to do computation. This sets up a situation. Well, that's what happens to us in everyday life. You don't pull out a pencil and paper and say, oh, I think I'll do some math now. A problem is posed in your life naturally, somehow. And then you go through, then you have to have some kind of skills in order to learn how to work with those problems and to come up with some kind of a solution that's needed. And that's what you have to do here. And there are multiple approaches. Not everybody's going to solve every problem in the world the same way, uh, but a lot of us come up with the same answers, but we go in different routes. I get the math. I know, I know how to do math, and I understand these concepts. I needed help um, teaching them to, to students, 12-year-olds who, who are at zero knowledge. I, I had to put myself there with them, and they don't have what's in my head as prior knowledge, and that's where I needed help. All right, there are two stacking games that the participants are engaged in. One is the number of seconds it takes to stack 10 cubes. In this game, each participant is given 10 unifix cubes. And uh, the facilitator or some designated person uh, count off the seconds. And as participants complete their stack of 10 cubes, uh, they indicate that they're finished by standing or holding a hand up or something. So that's the first stacking game. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The second stacking game is a game where the time is fixed. There are ten seconds each. Uh, the game has to be played in 10 seconds. And participants stack as many cubes as they can in 10 seconds. <laughs> At the end of 10 seconds, time is called. And so the number of cubes that are stacked and remain standing is their stack and score for each participant for that game. The data is collected. First is teams. And uh, the teams are given the task of finding the fastest player and find, finding the fastest team uh, in the group. What I want you to do, I'm going to give you the whole task at one time. You're going to record your data on chart paper. You're going to write your story about this stacking game. And you're going to find the fastest player in the fastest team. So what I'd like you to do first is get your data charted and up so that it's there for everybody to see. Then write your little story right there. And uh, find the fastest player in the fastest team in this game. The groups, however, are made up of different numbers of participants so that uh, the groups, the number of participants in groups might vary from three to five but it's necessary that the teams don't have the same numbers. And so then when participants are asked to find the fastest player and find the fastest team, their task is to figure out what process do I need to use in order to figure out which team is the fastest if the number of players on the 